Hello, everyone. I'm Asmar Khan. Um, it's really a pleasure to to be here and have a conversation with everybody. And personally, I'd like to thank uh, Chainlink uh, for, for the invitation. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm Kevin, I'm one of the co-founders of Linear Finance. Uh, so for those that are uh, unfamiliar with Linear, uh, let me kind of do a quick intro. Um, we'll discuss a bit on our roadmap and kind of where Linear is going. Um, and then hopefully I can take some questions from the audience. Uh, I'd love to have a chat with you guys. Uh, Kind of either on DeFi or or, or synthetic assets um, or or anything else that's that's on the top of your mind and um, in the space. So maybe you guys can ask questions along the way. I'll save that for the end. Um, okay. So the linear finance is uh, one of the uh, one of the first cross chain compatible uh, decentralized synthetic asset protocols. Uh, so for users to create, uh, trade, and manage uh, synthetic assets, basically what we call our liquids. Um, and our protocol acts as kind of a faster, cheaper, safer, and easier to use alternative compared to the other protocols. Um, our linear finance is supported um, by our native ERC-20 uh, linear token, Lina. Um, uh, the utility of the token uh, within the ecosystem is used for staking in the collateral pool, uh, liquidity mining, uh, governance, um, and investing in synthetic assets um, uh, with infinite liquidity and, and no slippage on our a linear exchange. Uh, most of the features uh, the users will get is uh, you'll have minimal transaction fees, um, instantaneous execution at pretty much every touch point of the protocol. Um, so a pretty seamless experience, uh, no matter if you stake on the protocol, you trade, or you're a market maker. Um, we built the protocol on BSC um, with cross-chain compatibility through our Ethereum bridge. Um, so users can essentially bring their Lina tokens, a bridge over to Binance Smart Chain, a stake, um, build our stable coin LUSD in the trade. Um, and all of our assets are actually composable um, uh, and can be brought back onto the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, so you can use it as kind of our DeFi Lego blocks. Um, for us, we have about 20 assets uh, that can currently that are being currently traded. Um, most of them are, are crypto assets, uh, along with commodities. Um, and then we're doing a big push um, into what we call our creative thematic exposures. Um, so it's usually look like digital ETFs, um, in large crypto market indices. So we have right now we have um, uh, Pi DAO's uh, DeFi++ uh, indice, as well as two uh, large cap um, and credit large cap indices. Uh, built by index providers such as Zangle out in Korea. Um, uh, in terms of the history of the project, we started our project last summer um, in the midst uh, of DeFi summer. Um, we were able to get ourselves uh, quite well capitalized and we raised money from individual from um, VCs uh, such as Hashed, uh, Genesis Block Ventures, uh, CMS, uh, Alameda Research. Um, and then we were able to release our mainnet on Binance Smart Chain uh, earlier this year. Um, we I consider ourselves to be quite lucky um, as we were able to catch kind of the DeFi wave. So we saw quite a lot of adoption um, from crypto users. Um, so uh, from, my, from our experience, kind of what has happened over the last year uh, in DeFi, um, you know, obviously over the last year and a half, um, we've seen kind of TBL explode across the board amongst many of our really popular protocols um, uh, the top ones, you know, it's usually driven by a lot of yield hungry users and increased composability between the protocols, um, such, which added what I consider to have a leverage effect on the actual TBL figure. So a lot of the TBL gets folded over, um, and it's not actually, uh, you know, a few billion dollars is probably far less, but, uh, just how we go ahead and calculate the TBL. Um, so, you know, I fast forward a little bit now um, and, uh, you know, for, for my sense, DeFi is currently is a bit negatively affected by just the general market sentiment um, and a bit in terms of the declining uh, crypto prices. Uh, but overall, the, the market seems uh, considered to be quite buoyant. Um, we still have a lot of legs uh, and all of us going forward as we can see uh, many of the scaling solutions coming out, um, the optimism, Arbitrum, you know, DK rollups into Starkware. Um, and a lot of the protocols have been actually going ahead and, and, and implementing these. And it's brought transaction costs and execution times um, 
uh, quite down for a lot of the users. Um, and for linear, we'll, we'll likely be exploring that, that option um, later on down the line, uh, particularly from a ZK rollup perspective. Um, obviously, I think, I think for, the, for a lot of the, 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 the L2 solutions right now, there's still some issues on finality um, that, that, we, that we have to get over. Um, but once we overcome those um, and or uh, people start building pipes between the L2 solutions, then uh, the ecosystem will actually really, really kick off. Um, you know, I, I think for the, in terms of the general frameworks uh, for DeFi, we've, we've come a long way. Um, we have a lot of the right players in place uh, in each, of, each version of the dApps, um, the level of sophistication um, in terms of the, I should say the underlying tech, as well as the product sophistication continues to increase. So if we look at players like, um, like Cream Finance, um, they're originally a lending borrowing protocol. Uh, but they've really now, once they've gone, gone into the urine ecosystem, um, they've really expanded out, uh, particularly into areas such as uh, having Iron Bank, um, and which, which offers uh, unsecured lending. Uh, now, in, in you know, what we consider in the TradeFi world, unsecured lending tends to be uh, extremely uh, difficult to do. Uh, but with the right integrations in place, um, they've been able to kind of do it in DeFi. And that's really unheard of and it's really revolutionary. Um, and hopefully that will kind of spawn, um, you know, a, for, for them um, and in that space, um, you know, additional, uh, I would say, lock TVL and people using the protocol. Now, uh, for us in the derivative space, you know, our relevancy um, comes to the fact that our users can, can trade and obviously a permissionless, uh, non-custodial and decentralized manner. And, obviously get exposure to a multitude of assets um, with just a single wallet. Um, and it's something that, uh, that will be quite important going forward. Um, as I think users continue to, uh, you know, once we, once uh, for us, for uh, the, the synthetic and decentral and synthetic exchanges, um, our trading experience becomes more and more like the centralized ex uh, exchanges will essentially grab more users um, in, in that case. Um, so if you look at the decentralized perpetual market, you know, trading volumes have actually increased to over 20 billion US dollars, um, sort of in the last quarter. Um, this represents about, you know, 150% growth on the previous quarter. And, um, you know, in, in a lot of it is users uh, looking for leverage um, positions on, on certain top coins, BTC, ETH. Um, it's, it's a product that's not always available to certain people on the centralized exchanges. So obviously from a decentralized uh, perpetual exchange, that's kind of one, one main, um, main positive factor for them. Uh, as for us, uh, for Linear, um, you know, we have a lot left on our roadmap. Um, we have a responsibility to our, our stakeholders um, to stick to our original goals of being a cross-chain compatible protocol. So. We are currently uh, working on two integrations with uh, with Moonbeam, so that we can get onto Moon River, um, sorry, um, Akusama, as well as as Polkadot. Um, we're going to be listing new assets and indices, so we're always on the lookout for uh, for new index providers that can provide uh, what I consider to be um, a, a good knowledge or, or, or solid knowledge in, in in the space and on the assets and how to rebalance. Um, assets in, in terms of uh, kind of sort of like ETFs, all right. Um, and then we will also be introducing perpetual, so for users to go ahead and they're able to go ahead and short uh, certain assets um, on the exchange. Um, and then lastly, we'll be looking at uh, uh, other L2 solutions, um, most likely in terms of zk rollup or other side chains. Uh, once once we go ahead and finish finish those. So, but, uh, but like I said, you know, when it comes to listing on new assets and introducing new products, um, you know, there's a lot of difficulty that goes into uh, creating the, the indices on chain um, and rebalancing every month. Um, so it's a blessing to have uh, a partner like Chainlink um, as they're able to go ahead and uh, quickly do these integrations um, and do the rebalancings and set up the customize the data feeds to our specifications. Um, in, in quite a secure and decentralized manner. Um, and so uh, I always have very good things to say about them. And it, it, it's great to have the team on board with us to, to help us on these. Um, and so at the end of the day, you know, we, you know, we continue to, for Linear, we continue to build along with Link. Um, 
mostly on trying to improve uh, our, our training experience for our users with their new assets, uh, you know, a clean and easy trading experience through our UI UX, um, you know, the products that we come out with, and even a 24 um, seven uh, customer support from admins in our group. Um, so that's basically it. Um, would love to hear from, from users on if they have any questions for myself on, on the near, we can chat for the, for the rest of the, uh, the last next, uh, four minutes or so. So a question that was asked is, what do you think is next for blockchains um, after, after DeFi? Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I think right now what we're looking at is we have so many different blockchains um, and, and, and so many different L2 um, uh, scaling solutions and everybody is building on top of those. Uh, whether it's in Solana, whether it's in Polygon, um, Arbitrum, Starkware, I, I think what we'll, I think we we will, what we'll end up with is just you know a, a bunch of disparate systems, um, different blockchains, and we'll, people will have to figure out the next big thing will be to how to inc how to maintain in, in maintain composability, um, and so um, like I mentioned before. Uh, you know, I'm hoping to look to find people to bridge across L2 solutions so that at the end of the day, you know, obviously if you look at the Ethereum ecosystem, it, it, it multiplies itself over because everybody can talk to each other. Um, and so I think we need to keep those, that composability um, and hopefully that's kind of what, what is next uh, after DeFi. Um, and I think once we get that in place, you know, we will have some more, um, we, ha we will have more institutions come in uh, where, you know, obviously uh, the systems are fast enough, the transaction speeds are fast enough so that we can do things like high speed, high speed trading uh, as such. Um, so I, I think, I think those are kind of, those will kind of be what's, what's next. Um, uh, another one is for synthetic assets and areas such as commodities, how would one would redeem such an asset? Yeah. So, so this is a common question, you know, for, for, for all of us that are in the synthetic asset space, um, you know, for, you know, every every um, every asset that we put out is just based on price. So all your trading is based on price. So there is no there is no redeemability in terms of in terms of the commodities uh, uh, that you're looking. At. You're only trading on the commodity price at the end of the day. So thoughts on uh, the question is uh, thoughts on Ave. Um, hey, you know Ave. Uh, kudos to Stanley and team over there. They have um, really. Uh, Taken, picked up, uh, taken the ball, and really have ran with it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, these originally started off very similar to Comp and, and adding additional assets, but now, you know, they're looking to they're they're looking to uh, to get get um, you know get in touch and in line with uh, with some of the one of the more regulated um, um, I would say get you know starting to get in line with regulations so that they can capture that wave. Um, and so I, I, I think uh, they've done a great job um, and uh, they'll continue to, to, to build on that. Uh, you know, uh, there's questions on, on perspectives on regulations um, and, and issues that you see with AML and KYC. Uh, you, know, at, at, you know, for us that are in the space, I, I, you know, we feel that uh, at some point in time, regulations will come into place. Um, I would be surprised if it doesn't, um, and it will affect all of us. It's just a matter of how we go ahead and deal with it and become compliant. Uh, you know, it, it may be, um, you know, some thoughts off the top of my head, and, and, and some people may agree, and may, uh, some people may disagree, but, uh, KY, you know, it may end up that we end up having to, you know, certain protocols can only accept um, a wallet addresses that have been KYC. Um, and, and that may be kind of how, how we, how we go ahead and do it. Um, but, uh, right now I, I still think it's a, it's a bit early days. Um, and so we'll obviously for us at linear, uh, we keep our eyes on this, uh, as well as speak with the other protocols on kind of how to, um, how to go ahead and manage ourselves, uh, in this regard. Well, thank you guys very much. Um, it was a pleasure speaking with everybody, um, you know, come to us and find us at linear.finance. Um, and uh, hope to speak to everybody soon. Awesome, Kevin. Thank you so much. It was great to get some, some Q&A there at the end and really have your perspective on things. So we appreciate it. Thank you again for joining us. Mm -hmm.